I just say hey, right? That's what I did in the last one? Okay. <laughs> okay, dude. Okay, this is it. This is easy. <laughs> Filming's easy. Cooking's easy. Uh, okay, today I'm gonna show you how to make a mushroom XO sauce. XO sauce is like a Chinese condiment, traditionally made with like leftovers and like uh, odds and ends of cured meats. Um, but today we're gonna make it just like a mushroom XO sauce. So it's spicy. It's kind of like Not a lengthy process, but you need a, quite a few ingredients But it's worth to make like a big batch and then you have this really nice condiment you can use for rice for noodles eggs Like honestly anything we'll, we'll taste it when, when we're done and let you know what it tastes like, but uh, yeah, let's get started pretty large one that I just diced. You don't have to be too neat and pretty with this, just small to medium dice. And then I'm gonna get these going. I got a pot just over medium low, and I'm gonna sweat these onions. The oil in there is sesame oil. You wanna use sesame oil for this. Um, just, just enough to coat the bottom of the pan. Season this with salt right away. And then while those start to go, we'll prep some of our next ingredients. So, I got some ginger. I got some organic little baby ginger. The trick with ginger is you can peel it with a spoon and you end up taking, if you use a, you can use a vegetable peeler, but you end up taking off quite a bit more. So if you just use a spoon, you can see like it's just, you take off barely any. So you get a little bit more bang for your buck that way. And you don't have to worry about cutting yourself unless you're really strong. Yeah, this is gonna take a minute, so. Okay, so once your ginger is peeled, I just wanna kinda of pretty finely dice this. Oh, mushrooms fell. Okay, so take this ginger and put it in with your onions now. Take a spatula and get this all coated in that oil. You just let those kind of cook slowly. It's kind of timed well because we have so many mushrooms to deal with for this that these will should be sweated perfectly by the time we're done prepping our mushrooms. So the mushrooms we have are cremini, which we're going to use mostly cremini, and then we're going to use a few shiitakes as well. So I got, I don't know, this many mushrooms. Mushrooms cook down a lot. Um, so it's better to have too much than not enough. I'm definitely going to use all these creminis, probably not all those shiitakes. Probably use like one, two, three, let's do four shiitakes. Oh, let's do five. With this sauce, so if you have a food processor, you can put all your mushrooms in just dry. Make sure your food processor is really dry. You can pulse it and it'll basically like mince them, which is kind of what we're going for. I'm just, I don't want to do it in my blender so I'm just going to do it this way but you do not have to be like pretty about this they cook down and lose their water so much that we're just kind of looking for like a very small rustic chop so do this with all your mushrooms all the mushrooms uh, roughly chopped here I'm gonna add these to the onions I've been cooking for about five minutes. They're starting to get really soft. Add those in. It's gonna look like a lot when you put it in, but again, they will cook down. Once I put these mushrooms in, I'm gonna turn the heat up a bit and take it to uh, a medium, just past medium. And then I'm gonna hit it with another pinch of salt. We want, mushrooms are full. The dog needs to shut up. Uh, Mushrooms are full of water, so you put, you put salt in, the water will seep out of the mushrooms, and then because it's overheat, that water will evaporate. So we'll take all the moisture out of the mushrooms, which is what we want. Then, later on, we're gonna rehydrate it with mushroom stock. So we're gonna give the mushrooms more mushroom flavor. 
So that's the idea behind salting your mushrooms. If you're doing a really quick saute or something for like steak or something like that, you use a different technique. But for this, we want all that water out of there and we want all of this to shrink down as much as possible. So we'll let that cook while we get the rest of our aromatics ready. Um, so I got some little red Thai chilies and I'm just gonna split them down the center. And what I'll do is actually do this into a container. Um, dealing with chilies, you like you don't need to wear gloves if you just try not to touch the inside. You're good to touch the outside, but if you touch the inside, these ribs and these seeds, that's what will get on your hands. And then if you go take a pee later, you'll be in pain. Or if you touch your eyes or something like that. People always talk about touching your eyes, but like how often do you actually touch your eyes in a day? You take a lot of peas in a day. And it sucks if you touch your, your private area. <laughs> Is that the right thing I should say? And then I do this onto a plate because you can do this over your cutting board, but the issue is because there's oils in these seeds, when you get most of the seeds on your cutting board, you'll find that it can get on your hands just from your cutting board too. Um, so anything, anything you use that's oil-based, use dish soap. Dish soap breaks down um, oil. So when oil of chilies and stuff, I'm just gonna wash my knife quick just so that I don't get these chilies all over my hands. And then I'll take a little bit of damp dish water cloth. <coughs> Holy shit. Already I can smell those seeds. And I'll just wipe this with a little bit of dish soap on a cloth, and then I'll take another cloth just to get the dish soap off. Just to break down those chilies. Chili seeds a bit. I'm not trying to have a bad time in the washroom. So then just take them and just rough chop these as well. And we're gonna get these in with all of our other stuff. Just starting to shrink down a little bit. So, in a lot of XO sauces, uh, they use like scraps of like cured and smoked meats. Um, so there's usually like a smoky element. And obviously I'm not, I don't eat meat, so I'm not gonna put any of that in there. But I do want that smoky element. So I have some smoked tofu. It's like really firm tofu. And it doesn't have much flavor other than smoke, which is nice. But I don't want like pieces of tofu in a sauce. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna microplane smoked tofu into this and it will in turn like smoke the sauce. So I'm just gonna put, I don't know. Oh shit. Bitch. Because it's gonna cook down for so long, it will kind of like melt into the sauce when it's this texture. So I'll put, I don't know, a couple tablespoons in there. See, it's like all stringy, and that will that will melt. So I'll put, let's say, like I don't know, maybe I'll do a quarter cup. But again, just eyeball it. If you want it really smoky, put the whole brick in there. But we just want that really savory, smoky, just like XO sauce always is. Thing we're gonna do before we really cook this down until it's time to add liquids is we want to toast some spices in here so I have a little Chinese five spice I'm gonna do about a tablespoon of this this has clove star anise cinnamon um, if you don't have five spice but you have a lot of spices you can just like Google five spice and you can add them in. Or if you just have whole spices, what you can do too is tie them in a little bit of cheesecloth. And when we add our liquids, you can just put all your whole spices in there to simmer with the sauce. And then you can just yank them out after because they'll be in cheesecloth. So we want to toast those spices. 
And then I also have... It's in a pepper mill because I use it pretty often, but uh, these are Szechuan peppercorns, so I'll show you what one looks like. They look a little bit crazier than, than other peppercorns, but they're this really cool peppercorn that looks like kind of blown apart. And they're from this region in China called Sichuan, which is where Szechuan cooking is from. And uh, they have this really crazy property where they like numb your mouth while you eat them. So people from that region believe, and I kind of believe too, that if you eat spicy food, it's like really good for you and it's good for your metabolism and it's good for your gut health. So they use this peppercorn to numb their mouth a little bit so that they can handle more heat. So if you're very sensitive to chilies and you still want to like ease into them, this is a really good way to do it. And always get the whole peppercorns and grind them fresh. You can buy like the Szechuan peppercorn powder, but you know, that's like buying ground black pepper. You always want fresh. So I'm gonna put like a good amount in here. Probably a full teaspoon of that. That is looking good. So this is pretty well, I mean, it's all cooked down and then all the water's gone. So it's actually like even starting to pick up a little bit of color on the bottom, which is perfect. That's what, that's how we know we're ready to add some liquid. So this is a Chinese rice wine called Shao Sing. Um, they sell it at Asian grocery stores. It is like the cheapest rice wine ever. It's like $2 for this whole bottle. Um, if you're like super rich and you wanna put sake in there, feel free. But uh, yeah, this stuff's just like so cheap. Easy to find. I'm gonna add like a quarter cup of that. We'll let that cook down before we add our stock. Give that a good mix. And we wanna reduce that now as well. You'll smell the sweetness of that wine right when it goes in. Ooh, that smells good, dude. Oh, that smells so good. So your pan's hot and this will only take like a minute to cook down. You can see the bubbles of the liquid. That's kinda of how you can tell things are reducing. And basically when it's like, if your pan is hot, it should be pretty quick. Like you can see it's already like, the water we put in is gone. So now we'll add our mushroom stock. You can uh, buy mushroom stock or you can make it pretty easily. Um, I don't know, I'm not gonna show how to make it, but just Google mushroom stock <laughs> or just make some. It's like, couple bucks they always have mushroom stock so that's it now we're just gonna cook that and rehydrate all those mushrooms with that wine and uh, and the mushroom stock making it super super mushroomy and then when it's really thick again then we'll do our last seasoning oh we're fucking close on this real close okay so i had a taste it's just finishing to reduce um, and now I'm gonna season it a little bit more, do our final seasoning. Probably should have got the plastic off this beforehand. Um, this is a black rice vinegar. So you can buy it at almost all Asian grocery stores. It a lot of times just says rice vinegar or it'll say, and I don't know if I'm pronouncing this right, but it'll say Chan Kang vinegar. Um, you want something like that. Um, and it's a little bit sweeter than normal. And it's like very, it's very like ricey, a little bit more than, than the clear stuff I find. So we're gonna add like about a tablespoon of that. And then I'm also gonna add about a tablespoon of sugar. And you can use any sugar here. I, like, I know white sugar is so bad for you, but like, white sugar just has this great feature that it is unflavored. It's just sweet. So like, sometimes it's nice to use in cooking. When you don't wanna change the flavor of anything, you just wanna add some sweetness. It's like, it is a good tool, but yeah, I wouldn't overdo it. So once it's like, there's a tiny bit of liquid left, you can see 
but it's still got like a sauce type quality, you're pretty well done. It's really, really hot, so it will thicken, of course, upon standing, but it's already got like a like gravy type texture. Check your final seasoning. I definitely want a bit more vinegar. Give that a mix and just retaste this and adjust as necessary. When you're adding sugar and vinegar, like you're just looking to balance the two. And since this is obviously so rich with all the mushrooms, the vinegar helps quite a bit. I also find it needs a bit of salt. So instead of you, instead of using actual salt, I'm just going to use a little bit of soy here. Give that a good mix. Taste. That is so good. So it's this really rich, very full of umami. It's got a little bit of smokiness from that tofu. And it's got all these very traditional Chinese spices. And it has this, if you spend a lot of time in Chinatown like myself, it just smells so good. Um, so yeah, we'll have a taste. I'll get you a spoon, Brendan. Let me know what you think. It's really hot. Make sure you blow on it. And it's gonna be, yeah, there's some spice just so you know. So yeah, this is it. You, you like have this, it'll cool down and get really thick. You don't have to reheat it to use it. Honestly, if you're just like eat, making a noodle dish or you're making uh, a rice dish, it's a very similar condiment in the sense that you can use like, like chili oil. It just has this really like meaty umami. It'll just add some richness to your dishes. So you can honestly make a big batch of this, put it in Ziploc bags, flatten those Ziploc bags out, freeze it, and you have a bunch of XO sauce. Um, it's kind of worth taking the time to just like have a couple things like this in your fridge or in your freezer as like someone comes over and you have like you have a little secret weapon that, that people will taste and be like damn what is that so yeah make it if you do make it let me know how it turns out let me know what you think um if you eat meat and want to like skip the tofu add a little bit of bacon or or some smoked ham or something in there um yeah, let me know how it turns out. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.